everybody, Palm Springs, Cindy. Before this video gets underway, I want to clarify just a few things from my last video. The video that I uploaded that had to do with how much money I made on YouTube. Well, first of all, some of the numbers I gave were incorrect, but I did add a link under the details that corrected those numbers for you to check. Bottom line, you saw my analytics page that explained and even had like a graph of what I earned by the month and even by the video. So that'll help you guys a little bit. I mean, if you were with me on that and if you want to go back and look at that, you know, that's, that's the reality of what I earn on YouTube. Now, I was pleasantly surprised at some of the comments you guys left because number one, something was brought up about, couldn't I earn more money by uh, affiliates? And yes, I could. And from what I understand, affiliates, like let's say I had an Amazon store and then you guys bought something from my Amazon store, then I would get a percentage of what, what was sold. And also, I have probably twice a week, I get offers to collaborate with businesses, like companies that sell this or that or whatever. And I've decided, unless they offer me like a new house or something, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, I'm really not interested because what I have discovered is oftentimes they send, well, not oftentimes, they always send a big contract for me to sign. And then they always, um, sometimes they even send a script for me to follow. So not, I'm not interested in either of those things. I've, you know, been there and done that. And it, frankly, it was not great. So I don't really care to be involved with other pe other companies or affiliates. I'm just, I could also do, um, you know, more things on Instagram or Facebook. Twitter, but I'm I'm not even interested in that. I just want to stick with YouTube. It's what I'm comfortable with. It's where my friends are. It's what I know. And I'm going to upload the kind of videos I want to upload as often as I want to upload. So, you know, so for right now, it's a fun hobby that I actually get paid to do. Yes, it takes work. Yes, it takes time, but I enjoy it. So, so really, it's a fun hobby that I get paid to do. You can't beat that. The, the rest of this video has to do with Eric and Chicken and then some places that Eric and I have gone. Um, we went uh, to another city and did some antiquing. I have video of that and I have some video of some fun places, uh, other like dining places we've gone to and enjoyed. So anyway, Stay tuned because there's more to come in this video that I know you're going to enjoy. Okay, now for those of you who don't know, Eric was a produce inspector for the state of California. I, I was a uh, agricultural inspector. And so what does that mean? Well, I inspected the uh, produce, uh, uh, lettuce, avocados um, that were in the field to make sure that they were up to quality standards uh, before they could be packed and shipped. And I was out in the field and uh, did that for about four and a half years. And what areas? Um, San Diego County. And what was what was growing down there? Avocados. Yum. And then I went to uh, Riverside County. Mm -hmm. And then I went to Imperial County out in um, Brawley and Blythe okay. for lettuce. And so, how do you know? How do you know that an avocado was good? Well, there's a, a minimum. Um, avocados had to meet in California. They had to meet a certain oil content. Oh. Avocado oil, and you know, when I was inspecting, it had to meet a minimum of eight percent before have, the avocado could be packed and shipped. Now, how do you measure that? You have to use a. Uh, I'm here going back a long time. Um, I'm going to have to think about that. Did you it's weigh it? Oh, yeah, I do. A refractometer. I had to take, uh, I had to use uh, hollow wax oil, and then you had to shake the, uh, you cut the avocado up, and you put uh, hollow wax oil in a tube, and you have to shake it for like five minutes, 
and then you get the oil, and then you put the oil under a refractometer, which reads the percentage of oil in the uh, avocado. So if now, do you have to do that to every avocado? No, what you do is you take a sampling. Okay. Let's say there's a shipment of 500 boxes of avocados. You go in there and you take a random sample of five boxes. Okay. And then you have those five boxes. You go in and you pick five fruit randomly. Okay. And then you would do that procedure. You couldn't, of course, do it on, you'd ruin oh, yeah. the fruit. It ruins the fruit. Okay. So you have to be somewhat careful with that. Yeah. And so, uh, Oh. That's what I did for a lot of a long time. A few years. Okay. And um and so tonight we're having uh actually you're gonna see that mayonnaise jar. And that's what we we put that we had a little dish of that for the avocados. The avocados, the <laughs> artichokes, and actually um Eric asked if I had mayonnaise and I said, Yeah, I think I have a new can or jar in my pantry. And so uh, he went over there and he looked and then he found that jar and actually he opened it and was like, hmm, but it's a vegan mayonnaise. Mm -hmm. Whole Foods or whatever it is, what's the brand? Um, Best Foods. Best Foods. And it, he said it's very, the reason I have it is because my daughters, my daughters suggested it and I got it. And um, it's very creamy and uh, it has a different flavor, Eric thought. It almost tastes like the essence of grass. <laughs> Believe me. Um, yeah, I was surprised. It's That's, all I know is it looks is it is creamier, creamier. Yes, looking. it's creamier. Yes. Obviously, you can't as a vegan you can't eat eggs. Yeah, vegan. Yeah. yeah. Here's my margarita. Here's Eric's margarita. And you can see over there. There's a. That's the. Looks like the bar area. He's got the air fryer, the blender, and so on. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so we're getting ready for dinner. And let's see, uh, I don't know where Poppy is. Let me see if I can find her. Where's Poppers? Okay, let me go in here, see if she's down here. She likes to look out the window out here. No, she's not out there. Hmm. I don't know where she is. Oh, I bet she's in my closet. So now don't season too much. Don't get them I'm too not, salty. Yes, I might do a light seasoning. Okay. Cheers. Cheers. Now how long will the um, chicken thighs take in the air fryer? Between 10 and 14 minutes, depending on thickness. And they're so and, good in yeah. the air fryer. Mm -hmm. And then what about the corn? Corn will take about five minutes in the microwave. You okay. leave the the husk on, you cut the ends off, and then after they cook, you just slide the cob right out of the husk and you'll get rid of all the silk. Oh, okay, we'll have to video that. All right. <laughs> and here is our final product. We started eating and I had to stop. So we have salad, boneless, skinless chicken thighs, in the hot air dry fryer, corn on the cob, and same over here. We're just sitting at the bar, enjoying an mm -hmm. easy way to eat our dinner. So yay, <laughs> yay for dinner. Eric and I are here at Cole's. Um, he had to get um, some swim trunks and a shirt and I had to return some uh, some items. This is a return spot for Amazon. And I had ordered a couple of dresses and they were too big actually, so I had to return them. So I did that, but I did, I also ordered a, um, that refurbished uh, iPad. So I evidently I have to take that back to UPS. So anyway, but while I was here, 
this Sephora is right here, so I'm going to get some, uh, some eyeliner. I need some, I like my, um, Estee Lauder liquid, but they don't carry it, so I'm going to get a Sephora liquid. So anyway, that's what I'm doing. That's what we're doing. Just walking along trying to find Eric. And I think I found him. Okay, we are off to UPS. Eric and I are on our way to Joshua Tree, which, um, like I had mentioned earlier, is the high desert. And you're going to notice it's it does not look at all like Palm Springs. It's much more dry. Um, it's like lots of hills, rocky hills, lots of just dirt and sagebrush. But as far as palm trees and more foliage like that, it you know it's very barren. But it is even though it looks different. We're we're actually climbing to a higher altitude. And we'll be in the little town of Joshua Tree pretty soon. And then you'll, we'll move right into the antique stores. This is one of Eric's and mine's favorite places for dinner. They have live music and we have, we're on our way out. We just had dinner, but look at this beautiful view. It's, it's, we're back in, this is actually Indian Wells Resort. And so we, they have a beautiful restaurant and we went in there for dinner, listened to the music. A gentleman by the name of Mark Antony sings and he was trained by, um, David Foster. So he sings a lot of David Foster songs. But it was a beautiful evening, as you can see. It was before the real hot summer nights. The name of this restaurant is Agave. They're on Highway 111 um, in the Palm Desert area, and they have the best margaritas ever. 
So if you're ever in town, this is a place to go for a wonderful house margarita. You don't have to order the Cadillac or anything. The house margaritas are the best. The rest of this video will be pictures of the beach area where I'm staying. So enjoy. In Newport Beach, just had my nails done and we are going to be walking home. I'm walking home from the nail salon. While, we, while I'm walking home, I'm going to take some pictures of some of the, of some cute little beach houses. Some of them are old. Some of them are not quite as old. But you're, I want you to see the different funky architecture in this particular area. Now, look at this. It looks like a um, craftsman, that little house that I just passed. And look at that little house. That looks old and that looks nice and big. Another big one that has 4th of July flags on the top. Look at that cute little, looks like a Cape Cod. And look how cute that little tiny house is. Another, um, I can't think of the craftsman. And this is like a Spanish style. So many different styles of homes.